Hello everybody, and welcome to the second video about the Civilization 3 editor. Okay, as you see, we've uh, created a little thing here for demonstration, but let's say that we don't like it, and you want to generate a map. Well, one thing you can do is go up to Map and go to Clear Map. Then you select your world size and the basic terrain. It's possible to have a um, entire world of just grassland. Of course, it would be a rather ridiculous game to play, but when you clear the map, you can have any terrain type. So, one thing they have in here is generate map. Just like in the game itself, you choose the size of the world you want, but you can tamper with the size. You could have, you know, say you want it just slightly bigger, 105, you can do that. Say you want a non-square map. Say you want a rectangular map. You can do that. Right? You select how much ocean do you want, what kind of continent, just like in the game. And also polar ice caps are basically just a um, just a visual little thing, whether they're there or not. They don't affect the gameplay. But allow X wrapping and Y wrapping is something very um, very interesting because in Civilization 3 you don't play on a sphere, you actually play on a cylinder. As added enough as that sounds, it's true. Now, if you take away X wrapping, you're suddenly playing on a flat sheet. Meaning you can't go from the left side of the screen and end up to the right side of the screen. But suppose you allow X and Y wrapping, suddenly you can go and end up on the top. You see this? You can come right to the bottom and go around to the top. It makes for a very interesting shape. And it's also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it actually is an impossible geometric shape. Also, one thing this tends to do is leave you with a lot of um, tundra tiles. So we're just going to create a very normal, very standard world. Same process as in the game. All right. Now, one thing you'll notice here, if you see these little X's, these are the starting locations. When you play the game, you can have players start there. That's where the players will start, rather. However, say you don't like those. There is something up here for redistribute starting locations. Watch the map. All right. And there you go. All in different places now. You can also redistribute all these other things, too. Often what I'll do when creating a scenario creator is it's very long and tedious to create land entirely from scratch. So I'll often um, start by generating a map and then edit it to my, um, to my liking. All right, now that we've done the map enough, we're going to go into Scenario Properties. Now, these still aren't changed in the rules, and they're pretty innocuous. You can invent, you can name your scenario. I'll just call this Bob. Why not? Um, yeah, I'm not really going to really create anything here, but um, the point is you can choose how many players you want. So even though it's a standard map, Let's say I want it to be a little bit more busier. I want 12 players. You can choose them. You can also choose which countries you want. Say you want 12 specific countries. You can choose them. So the player will be um, forced to pick between one of them. You can also cut out some of the victory locations. Let's say I only want someone to win by conquest. And you can change the, ru the rules here or the default game rules, which is something you can do in the normal game as well. You can make a time limit in which time you have to quit the game, and you can also tweak the time. Alright. 
Now what we're going to do is get into some more interesting things here. We're going to press custom player data which is going to unlock the player properties uh, menu. Now this it makes it a bit more of an interesting situation because of all the players you can choose what country you want to be to have that player be and player one is always the human player so let's say we want it to be Germany we want them to start with communism start with 10,000 gold and let's say we want this game to start in the industrial era also you can pick how many troops they start with like let's say we want them to have three settlers suppose we want them to start with a whole bunch of marines why not so there's a lot of things you can do with that this is the menu I would usually use if I want a game to start in a later era which I often do like if you wanted to say create a World War II scenario you'll probably most likely have people start at the beginning of modern times also free text for some reason on my program even if I put them in is kinda glitchy so I usually don't bother with that alright so we'll cancel out of that and the real fun comes with the rule editor so we're gonna press custom rules and it's very serious see even they will give you a warning this will open the rule editor and there is a lot to go under to go over with the rule editor so I'm gonna save that for the next video but keep in mind there are very you can do very many changes in the rule editor you can make the game completely different completely and utterly different but also you also want to be a little bit conservative in the changes that you make because it's very possible to um, cause your computer or cause the game to crash for very simple little things like a wrong file reference or something so I would recommend only making superficial and slight adjustments unless you really are very skilled at creating mods and things for other games so I will show all of these menus in the next video. See you then.